Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're modelling with straight lines on exercise 5H, so it's those real life questions that the examiners like to give us. So here we have a graph already given to us with the extension of a spring and the mass that's hanging off the end of that spring. First question here is to work out the gradient k of the line. Second question is to write out an equation and then it's to write the uh, answer of this equation in a context. So what you can do for, to work out the gradient to start with on part A is to select any two coordinates on that line and work out the gradient of those two points. It doesn't matter how far you take your gradient or where the position is on this gradient. Because it's a straight line, it should have a constant gradient throughout the line. So taking these two values here, we can go right by 100, up by 5. So doing a little difference in y over difference in x equation, that's exactly the same as y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. It's just written in a different way. The difference in the x coordinates is 5. The difference in the x coordinates is 100. So divide through uh, 5 by 100, and you get 1 out of 20. So quite a small gradient here. And you can see the scale is much greater on this x-axis than the y-axis. So that's why it's uh, such a small gradient here. So the gradient of the line for the answer for part A is 1 out of 20. Part B, write an equation of E linking M together. Well, in y equals mx plus c, I now know my gradient, um, but I also know that it crosses through the point 0, 0, because in the bottom left here, we have the coordinate 0, 0. So really, I know that its y-intercept is 0, so c is 0. So here, in this case here, just replacing the letters e and m with x and y, uh, we get e equals 1 over 20m. Now m here is not the gradient, m is just the mass on the spring. OK, now we have to write a, a context for the value of k, the gradient of the line. So what this means uh, in in technical maths talk is that the gradient is forever how much one we increase on the x-axis and how much it's how much the y-axis increases by. So now we need to link it into the question here. The answer here is for every one mass, one, one gram mass on the spring, the spring extends by one twentieth of a centimetre um, on, the, um, on the extension of the spring. So notice here how my explanation of the gradient was very similar to my explanation of the situation here. I just changed the y-axis with extension of spring and x-axis with mass of the, on the end of the spring. Okay, let's move on to a second question. They've given us some data for this question and we have to answer a few questions. Determine whether a linear model is appropriate by drawing a graph. Write an equation d equals at plus b and interpret the coefficients. Um, use the model to estimate when the container will be empty. So what we do is uh, sketch out some axes and plot on our coordinates. I'm sure you all know how to do this. And join up a straight line. Um, so the answer to part a, uh, is this a good linear model? Yeah, it's a very good linear model because all those coordinates fit on a straight line. Deduce the equation of the graph d equals at plus b. Okay, well here the first thing we do is gradient, second thing we'll do is y-intercept. So taking any two of these coordinates here, and it, instead of reading off the graph here, it might be a good idea to even use these coordinates that are on the um, on the graph here. So doing a little bit of that x or uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, we get 17.8 take away 19.1 divided by 10 take away 0. We're going to get a negative gradient here, which is exactly what we expect to happen, negative 0.13. So that's the gradient part of this question. And we also know the plus c part is just the y-intercept. So that's when it crosses this y-axis here, or the d-axis in this case. And that's going to be 19.1, because when the time is 0, 19.1 is the depth. So we know that C is 19.1. 
So now just plugging these into the equation of d equals a t plus b, we get d equals minus 0.1 t plus 19.1. So that's the equation of this line. Interpret the values of a and b. Well, in this case here, d is the gradient. So therefore, that means for every one second that transpires in time, the depth of the water is going to reduce by 0.13 centimetres. Make sure you go back to the units as well when you're interpreting these questions here. And the C part here means that at a time of zero, or initially, the depth of the water is 19.1. Okay, so this coefficient, this, this uh, constant at the end here, um, is always what happens when the time is equal to zero. Um, so either it's how high you are, or how deep you are, or how far along you are, the line, uh, etc. It's always the value of when t equals zero, this is your is sort of initial value. Okay, so that's the answer to part C. Use your model to estimate the container when it is empty. Um, when the container is empty. So we want to find we want to find this and we want this thing here to be a zero, because we want the depth to be zero or for it to be empty in that case. So set D equal to zero. Move the 0.13t on the other side and divide through by it, and you get 146.9. So maybe it's a good idea to write this in minutes, but it's effectively 146.9 seconds. Okay, another question for you here. In 1991, there were 18,500 people living in Bradley Stoke. Planners project that numbers living in Bradley Stoke would increase by 350 a year. Write down a linear model for the population P of Bradley Stoke T years after 1991. Now, we've, we've always written Y equals MX plus C for our straight lines here. But it's really important that you include the letters that they give you in the context of your question. So, if our initial value is, um, is 18,500 and we increase our population by 350 each year, then we just times 350 by T. This is effectively the gradient, this is effectively our initial value. Okay, part B is write down one reason why this model may not be realistic. And the reason here is that population is generally not a linear model. Um, population does not increase at a linear rate. More people will equal faster growth. So this model is not realistic. Generally, rates of population growth are exponential curves and will go up something like this. So as more people live in the village, the more popular it becomes, or the more babies are born, so hence the rate of growth in the next year is greater than it was previously. Word get out that gets out that Bradley Stoke is a nice place to live because more people are talking about it, or this higher population are having more babies, so hence the population grows again, but by more than it did last time. So you can see here it's not quite a good linear model, it's more of an exponential model, and we'll see this later on in the exponentials chapter. Right, so not many questions in the exercise here, so I'm not going to go through one with you, but we've been through three high-quality examples, so go back to them and have a look through them if you need to. Uh, persevere through the questions in example in exercise 5H, and ask a teacher if you need any help with them. Thanks very much for watching.